With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers set to have their 2022 training camp at the end of this month in July, I felt that it was important to start off the coverage of the Bucks training camp with this video today, that video being five training camp battles that we should all be paying attention to going into the Buccaneers 2022 NFL training camp. This is the Kickstarter to hopefully what is a lot of coverage about the Buccaneers roster moving forward into that part of their off-season workouts. I kind of have a plan in my head of previewing the entirety of the roster as a whole, going through position group, by position group, but I wanted to start off the coverage with this video today. I love making these videos. I try and make a couple of these every single year before the Tampa Bay Buccaneers training camp because you know what? This is where a lot of important roster decisions can be made. Backup battles, starting jobs, all these things are on the line, roster spots included. Again, all of these things are on the line for some of these position groups, for some of these players. That's why they are all pretty darn important to pay attention to. So let's just go ahead. Let's dive right in. The first training camp battle that I feel is going to be an important one worth keeping an eye on going into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers training camp is going to be Kyle Trask versus Blaine Gabbert for the backup quarterback position. Now, I know people may say, why is this a big deal, James? It's only the backup quarterback position. Tom Brady's the starter, so everything is going to be fine. I understand that, but whenever you think about the long-term implications of what this battle could potentially mean, it could be a big deal for the long-term future of the Bucks at the quarterback position. You have Blaine Gabbert, the long-term established veteran who is very comfortable in this Byron Leftwich, Tampa Bay Buccaneers style of offense. He has a lot of fans in Blaine Gabbert's corner on the coaching staff in the front office, and you also have Kyle Trask, recent second round draft pick. Last year, I don't even believe he was active for any game throughout the entirety of the season. He was the third quarterback on the roster, technically the fourth, if you want to throw Ryan Griffin into that mix as well. Is it time for Kyle Trask to finally ascend, finally show that development and show that, hey, I can be the long-term guy for this franchise by beating out a very capable veteran in Blaine Gabbard for that backup job? That is kind of why this is important to pay attention to. And, you know, based on everything that we've heard from the Bucks coaching staff leading up to this training camp, it definitely seems like Blaine Gabbert is the favorite by far in this battle, but especially Todd Bowles, the head coach, is not counting out Kyle Trask yet. He will have a chance to come in. He will have a chance to compete. Now, I will say this. If Kyle Trask does not beat out Blaine Gabbert for the backup quarterback position, it is not the end of the world. It does not mean that Kyle Trask is a wasted pick, a bust. It does not mean he doesn't have the chance to be the potential future franchise quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or at least get a chance to start for the team moving forward after the Tom Brady era has ended. But... As I said at the top of this point, it is going to be important in terms of showing the growth and development of Kyle Trask. Can he go toe-to-toe -to -toe and really give a very capable veteran backup quarterback a run for his money in terms of a position battle? That's what you've got to pay attention to in regards to Kyle Trask and what he needs to show in this upcoming training camp. If he comes in and he looks like he hasn't shown a lot of growth, he hasn't shown a lot of progression, maybe then you can start to get a little bit concerned. But this is the first battle that I think it is worth paying attention to. The second battle is possibly going to be for a starting position. It is going to be the battle of Mike Edwards versus Logan Ryan versus Keanu Neal for the opposite starting safety job next to Antoine Winfield Jr. Now, I said possibly for a starting position because you guys know how Todd Bowles and their defense likes to run things. They like to have a healthy rotation of guys. Logan Ryan, I expect him to play a little bit of safety, a little bit of nickel, but I still want to see what this battle is going to look like. Which one of these three guys is going to really separate themselves 
from the pack and emerge as that potential starting safety next to Antoine Winfield Jr. You have Mike Edwards, who has been on the team for the past couple of seasons now. He is in the last year of his contract, and man, oh man, when Mike Edwards has been on the football field, he's been absolutely electric every single time. He's an absolute ball hawk of a defender, and he really does have some very high levels of potential in terms of what he can be if he is made a full-time starter for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. You then have reliable veteran defensive back Logan Ryan, who has played starting nickel corner, starting outside corner, starting safety, a team captain for multiple teams, the Patriots, the Titans, the Giants, all really well-respected organizations. Logan Ryan has been a part of all of them, all really, really good things to hear. Do the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to go with some of the younger options, or do they want to go with a more reliable veteran option who could very easily emerge as the leader of this Buccaneers secondary, kind of with what we saw with Richard Sherman last season at that starting safety position, or do they go with a guy who is kind of looking for a little bit of a redemption arc, if you will, and a little bit of a redemption story in Keanu O'Neill. Keanu O'Neill played safety for the Atlanta Falcons, did a fantastic job in that role, was one of the better young safeties in the league. Unfortunately, injuries took their toll. He went to the Dallas Cowboys. They put him at linebacker for some reason, and now he is coming back in his role as a safety with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's very excited for this opportunity. He is still pretty darn young, and can he showcase that ability and that skill that he had with the Atlanta Falcons, which again was one of the best young safeties in the league. This is going to be a very interesting battle in my opinion, and I think everybody has got a lot of great momentum in their favor for a ton of different reasons, and I'm going to be very excited to see which one of these guys does end up getting the lion's share of the snaps moving forward at that safety position next to Antoine Winfield Jr. because I think all three of them can really do a great, great job. The third battle that I think we should all be paying attention to moving forward is again back to a backup position battle, but one that I still feel is very, very important, and it is Rashad White versus Giovanni Bernard versus Keyshawn Vaughn for the running back to duties on this roster. It's no secret, Leonard Fournette is going to be the starting running back for the Bucks. He just signed a big time, long-term extension with the team. He's not going anywhere. But after that, you lost Ronald Jones in free agency to the Kansas City Chiefs. You have Keyshawn Vaughn, who have you who you have been working with for the past couple of years, and he's shown some hints of good play here or there, but there's also been a very interesting lack of playing time for Vaughn. He's been inactive in a handful of games since he has started his career here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Can he kind of rebound in a way and begin to prove that he deserves more playing time moving forward? You again have another reliable veteran in Giovanni Bernard, who has been able to showcase very good ability with running the ball and receiving the ball. He had a role last year, a niche role, if you will, as a clutch two-minute drill type of receiving back for this team. Do they trust him moving forward to get more snaps? And then you have recent draft pick Rashad White, who has looked fantastic in all the early off-season workouts. The dude looks like an absolute physical specimen who can do so, so many things different things. Do you go with the young, fresh, healthy rookie in Rashad White at that number two running back spot? These are the questions that are going to need to get answered in this upcoming training camp. A lot of guys have a lot of stuff on the line. Again, I think it's anybody's race right now at this point. All three guys have some different things going for them. I think that right now, though, you would possibly have to give the edge a little bit to Rashad White and Giovanni Bernard because, again, we haven't heard a ton about Keyshawn Vaughn. The coaching staff does still have a decent amount of confidence in him, so maybe that does kind of, you know, get some more momentum in his favor. But again, I still think it's anybody's race. I do believe that this is one of those spots that is wide open and the cream will rise to the top, essentially. So we will have to wait and see as to who breaks out of the pack. The second to last battle that I think is worth paying attention to in this upcoming training camp is going to be the battle for the fifth and sixth and possibly fourth wide receiver positions. Right now, you have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Russell Gage as your top three wide receivers. That is a fantastic trio, possibly the best wide receiver trio in the entirety of the NFL. 
After that, it's going to be an absolute madhouse of guys competing for three roster spots, potentially even two if, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers decide to only carry five wide receivers, and the names are as follows. Scotty Miller, Cyril Grayson, Brashad Perriman, Tyler Johnson, Jalen Darden, Jared Stearns, Devin Tompkins, about three or four other wide receivers who are competing as well. The guys that I mentioned, I feel, are going to be the guys who are going to be the main wide receivers competing for that spot. You know what? I'll even name the other guys, okay? I, I will. You got Cameron Brown, Kalen Geiger, and Vincent Smith. Those are your other wide receivers. I'm throwing everybody into the mix, darn it, because this is, again, another one of those position groups that I feel a lot of different things can happen, folks. I think some good wide receivers are going to, unfortunately, get cut from this team after training camp, after the preseason, and going into the regular season. I mean, you look at you know, a handful of these guys right now, five of these guys, Scotty Miller, Cyril Grayson, Brashad Perriman, Tyler Johnson, and Jalen Darden. All five of those guys have some level of decent investment from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers into those players. And what, possibly only two or three of them are going to make this roster? That's, you know, definitely a wild situation in my opinion. And you can't count out the other guys I mentioned on this list, like Stearns, Tompkins, Brown, Geiger, and Smith as well. These guys can all definitely make some surprises. Devin Tompkins has already been getting praise and, you know, respect from Todd Bowles, the head coach of this team, and some of the other players and coaches that are on this Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster and staff. So I really think that a lot of things are up for grabs. The Buccaneers coaching staff has also not been shy as to say that, hey, it's anybody's game in terms of these wide receiver positions as to who can step up and who may be having to step out and away from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers moving forward. So yeah, this is going to be another one of those really good position group battles to pay attention to for a couple of roster spots. This is do or die scenario, folks. You have a lot of good wide receivers here who are only battling for a couple of roster spots. It's good to have a healthy, healthy amount of depth, by the way, but man, oh man, some good wide receivers are going to get cut. So let's see all of these guys give it their absolute all in training camp and try to get those couple of roster spots. But finally, folks, the last training camp battle that I wanted to talk about. Again, I may make an entirely other video with more training camp battles. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about that down in the comment section below. And, but, uh, you know, anyway, I was going to say something else, but it's fine. The last training camp battle I want to say is this. Cam Brait versus K. Dotton versus possibly a free agent addition. I guess you could throw in Co. Keeft and Cody McElroy in there as well, but right now I feel for a starting tight end opportunity, I think that right now the safest bet to make is Cam Brait, K. Dotton, and a eventual free agent addition to be named later. Whoever that may be, it could be Kyle Rudolph, could be Jared Cook, could be any one of the other guys that I named in the free agent, or I guess I should say tight end options for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a video recently here on the channel. Go check that out. But this is going to be a very big, very important battle. The starting tight end, the safety blanket for Tom Brady, who's it going to be? That is going to be the biggest question here that is going to be answered regarding the tight end position. Cam Brake reliable veteran. We've already talked about him in previous videos. He's got solid hands. His blocking is all right, I think, overall, but he has been getting up there a little bit in age. Can he still produce at a high level? He has been the third tight end for this team for the past couple of seasons now. Can he rebound and really have a resurgence as potentially the Tampa Bay Buccaneers tight end number one yet again? You then have fourth round rookie Kate Otten, who has got a lot of good skills, folks. He's good at blocking. He's good at receiving. He's got great size. He is what you want in a potential long-term option at the tight end position, but do the Buccaneers coaching staff feel that K. Dotton is ready for that type of opportunity, or do they want to ease him into things in his rookie season and potentially see what they have later on down the line in years two and beyond? And then, again, you have a free agent, a free agent addition that is a possibility. Kyle Rudolph, uh, you know, Jared Cook, Eric Ebron, those are, you know, three guys who I would definitely be interested in on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and some of the other options I've talked about in previous videos are one of those guys going to come in onto this roster and make an impact and kind of maybe possibly even automatically be, be handed the starting job. These are definitely some of the questions that are floating around in my mind right now. I'm sure a lot of your guys' minds as well, and it is going to be a very interesting position to shake out. Do the Buccaneers trade for a tight end? I don't know, folks. I think a lot of stuff 
stuff is on the table regarding that position group right now, and we'll just have to wait and see, and it all starts in training camp at the end of this month for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2022. But what do you guys think about all these training camp battles? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. What I was going to say earlier was, if you guys do want to see another one of these videos, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below, and also let me know what other training camp battles you are going to be interested in seeing in this upcoming Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2022 training camp. I would love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.